Brothers and sisters, Israel is about to sacrifice the red heifer on Sabbath or Pesach. This is an abomination to God, and it is related to the abomination of desolation. In the heart of ancient Jerusalem, amidst the hustle and bustle of the temple precincts, a solemn ritual unfolded, the offering of the red heifer. The red heifer sacrifice, a profoundly significant ceremony in Jewish tradition, was believed to purify those who were ceremonially unclean. But unknown to many, this ritual would soon be entwined with divine prophecy and the cosmic struggle between good and evil. As the sun kissed the golden walls of the temple, priests clad in pristine garments led forth a flawless red heifer, its crimson coat gleaming under the morning light. Gathered around the courtyard were throngs of worshippers, their hearts heavy with the weight of sin and longing for spiritual renewal. Yet, unbeknownst to them, a foreboding presence lurked in the shadows, a darkness that sought to twist the sacred into something profane. It was whispered among the wise that the red heifer sacrifice, though ordained by ancient tradition, had become tainted, an abomination in the eyes of the Almighty. Amid this spiritual turmoil, whispers emerged of a female messiah, a figure veiled in mystery and destined to bring forth a new covenant of redemption. She was said to be the true embodiment of the sacrificial offering represented by the red heifer, a vessel of purity and grace sent to cleanse humanity's sins. But as the priests raised their hands to begin the ritual, a sudden hush fell upon the crowd. It was as if the very heavens held their breath, awaiting the unfolding of divine providence. Echoes of warning resonated in the scriptures. Exodus 20 verse 25 spoke of the purity required for offerings to the Lord. And if thou wilt make me an altar of stone, thou shalt not build it of hewn stone, for if thou lift thy tool upon it, thou hast polluted it. A sense of unease swept through the crowd as the red heifer was led to the altar, for in their hearts they knew that proper purification could not be found in the blood of beasts alone. Suddenly, a voice pierced through the silence, resonating with an otherworldly authority. It spoke of a promise fulfilled, of a comforter who would come to guide humanity unto righteousness. And in that moment hearts were stirred with a newfound hope, as if the fabric of reality shifted to accommodate the divine. The red heifer was sacrificed, its blood spilling upon the sacred earth. But amidst the solemnity of the ritual, a greater truth emerged that true atonement could only be found through the sacrifice of the heart, offered up in humility and love. And so, as the sun dipped below the horizon and the echoes of prayers filled the air, the prophecy of the red heifer found its fulfillment in the eternal grace of the female Messiah, the true comforter who would lead humanity unto salvation. In the ancient annals of Jewish tradition, the red heifer held a position of unparalleled sanctity. Its very existence was shrouded in meticulous criteria, as outlined in the sacred text of Numbers 19 verse 2. It had to be, without spot, wherein is no blemish, and upon which never came yoke. But the purity of this sacrificial offering extended far beyond mere appearance. Every detail, down to the minutest feature, held significance. In the hallowed precincts of the temple, where rituals intertwined with the divine, the red heifer was subjected to scrutiny unlike any other. Its horns, hooves, and eyelashes bore the mark of crimson, a symbol of purity, a reflection of the divine ordinance. Yet even the slightest imperfection was deemed unacceptable. If the horns and hooves lacked the crimson hue required by sacred law, they were excised with precision, ensuring that only perfection would be offered unto the Almighty. The red heifer was more than just a sacrifice, it was a conduit of purity, a vessel through which the people's sins could be cleansed. Its flawless appearance mirrored the unblemished nature of the divine, symbolizing the perfection sought by those who sought reconciliation with their Creator. In the annals of biblical history there arose a title that echoed through the ages, Lamb of God. This honor bestowed upon our Lord by the venerable John the Baptist carried a weight of divine significance that reverberated across the heavens and the earth. John the Baptist, a voice crying out in the wilderness, proclaimed with unwavering conviction, Behold, the Lamb of God, that taketh away the sin of the world. In those words lay the essence of salvation, the promise of redemption for all humanity. Though the term was mentioned in the apocryphal testament of the twelve patriarchs, John's lips revealed its true resonance. Honor Judah and Levi, for from them shall arise for you the Lamb of God, saving all nations by grace said the ancient text, foreshadowing the coming of the Messiah in the patriarch's lineage. The Christian tradition that the title Lamb of God found its profoundest meaning. 
rooted in the prophetic language of Jeremiah 11 verse 19 and Isaiah 53 verse 7, it spoke of a sacrificial lamb, pure and unblemished, destined to bear the world's sins upon its shoulders. In the shadows of Jerusalem, where lambs were offered upon altars of stone, the true Lamb of God walked among mortals, his footsteps guided by divine purpose. His journey was one of selflessness and sacrifice, culminating in the ultimate act of love upon the cross. As the blood of the Lamb mingled with the dust of Golgotha, a new covenant was forged, one of grace and mercy, transcending the boundaries of time and space. For in the Lamb of God, humanity's sins found absolution, and the promise of eternal life was manifest. And so, across the expanse of history, the title Lamb of God endures as a beacon of hope, a reminder of the boundless love that knows no bounds. In the sacrifice of the Lamb we find redemption, and in His resurrection, we find eternal life. In the sacred tapestry of Jewish tradition, the red heifer sacrifice holds a place of profound significance. According to the ancient ritual, detailed in Numbers 19 verse 2, the heifer must be without spot, wherein is no blemish, and upon which never came yoke. Its essence must embody purity, and its crimson hue must reflect the divine ordinance. However, despite the meticulous observance of tradition, a more profound truth lies veiled beneath the surface. For some, the red heifer sacrifice has become an unwitting symbol of deviation from the true path of righteousness, an abomination in the eyes of the Almighty. In the shadows of Jerusalem's temple, where rituals and offerings ascend to the heavens, Whispers of divine prophecy echo through the corridors of time. It is said that the red heifer sacrifice, though ordained by tradition, has become tainted, a distortion of the sacred, a precursor to the abomination of desolation. But amidst the turmoil, a beacon of hope arises, the promise of a female messiah, the other comforter whose true sacrificial offering surpasses the crimson heifers. Just as Jesus is hailed as the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, so too does the female Messiah represent the ultimate cleansing of sins. Echoes of prophecy resound in the depths of Scripture. Jeremiah 11 verse 19 and Isaiah 53 verse 7 speak of a sacrificial lamb, pure and unblemished, destined to bear humanity's sins. And just as the red heifer must be without imperfection, so does the true sacrificial offering transcend the confines of ritual and tradition. Humanity finds redemption in the purity of the Lamb of God, and sins are cleansed beyond the limitations of earthly offerings in the sacrifice of the other comforter. The true essence of atonement lies not in the blood of beasts, but in the boundless grace and mercy of the divine. Thus, as the crimson heifer stands before the altar, its existence speaks of a more profound truth. This truth transcends ritualistic observance and embraces the limitless love of the Creator. In the shadow of the true Lamb of God, humanity finds solace, redemption, and eternal salvation. In the culmination of divine design, the redemption of humanity finds its completion through the interplay of two messiahs. This intricate plan stems from the understanding that the sacrifice of Jesus serves to save those born with a sinful nature, yet untouched by personal transgression. As one messiah, Jesus emerges from heaven in human form to fulfill his sacrificial role paving the way for the salvation of his counterpart, the female Messiah called Grace. Scripture resonates with echoes of this profound truth, from Psalms to Isaiah, revealing the divine orchestration at play. Embodied in the earthly sanctuary, Grace assumes the sacrificial mantle akin to the red heifer, extending salvation to sinners. Through Grace, bestowed upon humanity as an unmerited gift, the promise of Ezekiel's prophecy materializes, a reunion of Judah and Israel under the banner of divine mercy. Thus, as recipients of this boundless grace, we stand unified in our redemption, with no room for boasting, for salvation is the ultimate gift of God to humankind. Here is Proverbs 29 verse 18. Where there is no revelation, people cast off restraint, but blessed is the one who heeds wisdom's instruction. May this verse resonate with our lives, reminding us of the importance of seeking wisdom and understanding daily.